Hooked up. Looks like a nice one. Oh, that is a gorgeous pre-spawn crappie. Oh, sitting out here, actually right out of a little spawning bay. Get him back. And if you can see on my graph here, I'm sitting right on the outside of a real shallow bay. And Kyle and I were actually out about three or four days ago and we caught, shot some really cool underwaters actually back in here. It was really warm, at six to eight feet of water. A lot of bass, a lot of bluegill, a lot of crappie up in this bay. And they all kind of relate to each other. It doesn't really matter the species in the springtime when they go up shallow, everything goes shallow. It's just full of life. Here in Minnesota right now, it's not legal to catch largemouth bass or smallmouth bass. Um, they're definitely around and we can see that and they're soaking up that sunshine. And then the last three or four days, we've had some really cold nights getting down to like 20 degrees or so. And that's pretty common for the spring. You get a lot of warm days, a lot of cold days. It's really inconsistent. This morning we came in and we slid back out towards the main lake and once you know it, this break line is filled with crappies. You can see it here on the 360. It's a big giant school of crappies out here. You know, once you get on a group of crappies, they're not all that hard to catch typically, if you can stay off of them a little bit, but I would say the hardest part is just getting around them. You know, we're on a fairly large lake and these fish can kind of be anywhere, especially this time of year, if you haven't been on the lake. These crappies are hanging out super suspended over about 20 feet of water. And that's actually really common for them to do. Once they slid up, they were in about six to eight feet of water. Out here now, they're in the same six to eight feet of water, they're just hanging over 20 feet. And so it's a lot shorter distance for them just to swim straight out than for them to swim all the way down to the bottom. There's one. Look, and then the fish is already at the surface. So that just goes to show you how suspended they are. We're in, look at that, 27 feet of water. And that fish was on the surface in a matter of seconds, literally. Those fish are right in front of me, like right in front of me. They're like four to five feet down. And so if I was to get that boat right on top of it, I would spook them right away. There we go. You know, it really wasn't all that long ago. <laughs> These fish were covered in ice. They're sitting in the basin. It doesn't take that long for them to get up shallow. Just a matter of, a couple warm days and they'll scoot up. Obviously with the cold weather, they've kind of slid a little bit back out. So if I zoom out here, give you guys a little better picture. We have a real deep basin here. And then up here is a nice shallow spawning bay. And so these fish have made the trek all the way in here. And then once we get some cold water, they're not gonna wanna go all the way back out but they are looking for a little more consistent uh, water temperature. So they were up in this area. They're gonna go about halfway just to find a little bit more consistent water temp. And they're just gonna hang out there until we get a little bit warmer days and then they're gonna slide back up. Weapon of choice today, uh, just a little 7.3 medium light, something to whip this little hair around. Lunker hunt, hair jig, keeping it real simple today. <laughs> Making long casts, being able to stay up the fish is really important, especially when they're only, you know, six feet below the water surface. Look at that. Look at all the water between them and the bottom of the lake. And then if you go out and look at the 360 here, what in the heck are all those? That's actually their shadows. And so you can tell how suspended they are by how far away these fish are from their shadows. I position the boat 
just downwind from these crappies allows me to have a little bit more boat control. I don't want to slide into those fish and as the wind blows me back, I can just keep inching forward. They seem to mark really well when I stay downwind of them. That's another really nice crappie. Oh, that is fun. <laughs> A little hair jig. That's awesome. <laughs> Could just about well, get a meal. God, they're marking really well. Look at that. That is a pile of crappie right there. Find them on my electronics, get about 30 feet off of them and hit spot lock and I can just sit here, don't have to move the boat. I can just make continuous casts in front of the boat and stay. I mean, with these crappies, they're not moving a whole lot, so. Oh my goodness, it's every cast. It's every cast. And you know, these fish, we're still about 10 degrees away from these fish actually spawning. This is strictly a pre-spawn deal. And the only thing they're looking for is warm water. And with the warm water comes bait, obviously, but these fish are still really cold from sitting under the ice all year. So they're really just looking for warm water, heat up and deeper water seems to hold a little bit more warmth because that cold doesn't get down nearly as fast. And so when it comes to locating these crappies, there they are. You really have to take in all the information that you can, looking at past weather, looking at future weather, and then just getting out on the water and trying to figure out what these fish are doing here in the springtime or any time of the year really is going to be extremely beneficial to you, especially if you haven't been out on the water a whole lot. Um, and just understanding where these fish are going, where they've been, and just trying to pattern them will get you fish in the boat. <laughs>